Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about a video I just recently watched from Corridor Crew where they actually were able to get some very consistent styles with stable diffusion. Something that I've been struggling with is getting a very heavy style uh, to be consistent because typically what will happen is you get a lot of inconsistency because of uh, the movement that's happening and everything. But Corridor Crew shared a technique that actually some people commented in my EB synth video that you should track the face to get some consistent results with the style. Typically what I would do is I would try to keep it as close to the original video so that the AI has something to follow and try to keep it as consistent as possible. And that has worked uh, various times, but then I wanted to push it more so I can have more heavy style with it. And Cora Crew shared how they accomplished their Into the Spider-Verse visuals by tracking the face. And I actually wanna try that today. I wanna to try to use some footage that I have, track the face and see if I can get some very consistent results and have a heavy style with that. Yeah, so let's get right into it so we can see what kind of results we can get. So I'm gonna start off by picking a few clips from this video I made when I went to Anime Expo. Uh, I shot all this footage. I think this is great for transferring style because people are already dressed up, you know, in, in cosplay and stuff. So it will make it uh, work really well with the AI. I can't go with stuff like this, unfortunately, even though it's such a cool shot um, because I am walking forward. The only way this works is if the camera position is not moving forward or if it's moving side to side only. The reason being is because there is change in pixels things do change as you zoom in. And obviously there's, this is a smaller face and certain pixels that obviously the further you are, the smaller the face and the, there's a difference in pixels. And then you bring closer, uh, obviously the face, the head gets bigger and there's just so much change that uh, I don't think it's gonna work like that. So what I have to look for is something maybe like this. Like I think this works right here. Uh, this clip works. Uh, because I'm moving to the side. It's not so much. It's not moving f forward and back. Let me see what other clips might work Yeah, like this would have been really sick to do The one with cloud, but I am walking forward unfortunately So that's not gonna work. Yeah, there's some really cool shots here that unfortunately I can't I can't use So this shot I want to actually really work well um, Because I'm just moving around this person and not forward and back so this one, I, I want to try this one. Uh, this one and the Samus one. I believe this is Ocelot from um, Metal Gear Solid, but I might be wrong. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm going to try this one. Yeah, this one's going to work great. Uh, so let me put this into After Effects. All right, so I got the clip into After Effects. And now what I want to do is I want to track this. So this is the dimensions I'm going to run. 1088 by 960. It just, it covers, I think, enough space to just cover this person's, most of their body. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go to, you wanna come down here to where it says stable motion. And you want to, so you wanna put the tracking point somewhere where it's gonna follow it completely. So let me try the eye and let's see how that works. And then obviously you press uh, analyze forward down here. If you've never done this before, you just analyze forward and have it analyze. It's tracking it very well. Cool, yeah, it did, it did really well. So after you do that, um, you go to apply and then it's gonna ask you to apply dimensions, uh, X, Y, just put yep. This should now be tracking the head. And as you see these black lines on the side, it's because it's shifting the whole frame so that the head doesn't move around. So the head stays in this in one place everything else moves and it kind of like stabilizes it. So it's even a cool effect that a lot of people use when uh, they do dance videos and stuff. So I'm sure you've seen it before. After you're done, you want to export these frames and put it into stable diffusion. So let's do that. All right, so I put the dimensions in there. Let's try one of the frames. So this is a revolver. Ocelot, I believe it's from uh, Ocelot from Metal Gear Solid. I believe the artist is uh, Shinkawa, the guy who does Metal Gear Solid art. Uh, let's just generate that. Let's see what we get. And we also want to get a good seed, a seed that's going to work well with. All right, so let's try that seed, but let's try to bring down the denoising strength because it's not doing so well. All right, that looks pretty sick. 
Uh, let's actually bring up the CFG scale. Yeah, that looks sick. Let's try a different frame and see if it keeps that consistent style because now there is not a lot of head movement going on. Yeah, wow, that, that looks really sick. Like, it kept it pretty much the same. Let's try another one. Like, maybe something that's a little bit more drastic. Okay, there is a little bit of a di uh, change, just the shadows and stuff, but maybe that's just not... Uh, with the camera movement that I'm making, it might cause that to happen. Also, maybe because this person's tilting their head, the light is shifting also um, from their face and their body and everything, so... That might not be avoidable. If I would, if that person was just straightforward to the camera, it might be that it gives me even more consistency than what I'm getting. But this is looking still really good. You might be thinking, what's the big deal? It's just like stable diffusion. This is what it always does. But the, the thing that, the tricky thing is to get something that's moving and getting a completely different result like in the facial features right here. Typically I can get a very consistent style but it always has to get close to what the person actually looks like, unfortunately. This is the first time I'm able to do it where it has a completely different face. It's, it does, looks nothing like this person, and yet it's retaining the same face, even with the movement that's happening. Even though I put a different frame where the, the person is moves their body, you can still see a consistency in, the, in this face. It looks like it's the same person, you see? And that's really sick. That's that that's really cool this should be very useful for a lot of people who who are looking to make someone look completely different um like they did in quarter crew they made people look like tom holland and all i see is just like some next level stuff right here so i'm gonna mess around with this and get results that i'm really happy with and then i'm gonna put it into after effects that go from there all right so let's see what this actually looks like nice that is so sick ah <sighs> Man, that, that looks so cool. It's very jittery, yeah, but look at the face. Look at how consistent the look is of the face. It looks like it's the same person. It doesn't like completely randomize the look of this person. It keeps it very consistent. To think that this came out of this, like it's crazy. That's so crazy. I dig it a lot. I even did one where I zoomed in to the face and I uh, tracked it this way and I got some pretty cool results as well. So cool. If you actually remove the background, it, it stays quite consistent. So here I put them in a way where you can see them together. That's so cool. So let me actually try another one now. Uh, and let me track this. I tracked this. I was actually struggling a little bit with this one because uh, as I was tracking the face, there's a moment where she puts the blaster right in front of her face and then it was hard to track that, but uh, I try to smooth it out as much as I could. So let's export this. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna run it and uh, try to get a good seed. Oh wow, that is sick. Oh my gosh, that looks so sick. All right, uh, let's try another frame that's very different and let's see if we get very similar results. Yeah, uh, that looks good. Okay, it's quite different. You know what I wanna do too? I actually wanna, I wanna rotoscope out the background so that I can just focus on instead of also the background. Reason being is because there's like a lot of warping happening with the background and I don't, I don't like that as much. This is done. I can already tell you there was some issues with a certain section of this animation. Um, and, uh, and you'll see where it's at, right, yeah, right here when the gun goes over the face. That's the only issue, but as you see, it does keep the face quite consistent, right? I mean, obviously that messes everything up. Maybe I can even uh, remove that section. Yeah, it looks kind of weird, but just trying to see what it would look like if that wasn't the issue. You see, it does the same thing as other video. It keeps the face pretty consistent. There's a lot of jitteriness down here. I would have to lower the frame rate so that it doesn't look so crazy, but you get the idea, like right here, the face stays quite similar every frame. Obviously, there's going to be a day where this is not going to be an issue, but people are getting kind of sick of the jitteriness. But you know what? It's just what it is right now. But I think it's like someone who is complaining about VHS quality 
before DVDs were even invented. You just enjoy it. That's the only way you, you were able to watch TV at home. And in this case, this, this is all we have to make these kind of effects. We just, you just work with what you got. So, all right. So that was fun. I was really pleased with the result. I think that technique works so well and I'm definitely gonna be using it more often. Definitely use it yourself. I would love to see what you guys come up with. So share it with me on social media or wherever you can contact me because it definitely inspires me when it comes to creativity and stuff. So I think we all learn from each other. Thank you so much everyone for watching, for liking, uh, subscribing and commenting. That really helps a lot with exposing my channel and I really appreciate everyone who has been supporting the channel. I really, really, I'm thankful for that. Thank you so much. So until next video, and like always, take care, God bless, and...